represent to you the blessings of Make sure you go out there in person. Hallelujah. Now, I'm tired as I'm going. Brother, Jesus is that. Man, it's beautiful. I mean, I'm like, I'm about to make 46 years old jump around like that. But I say, you know my God, I'm going. So, without any further ado, it's straight down in the building. Straight down in the building. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up somebody. Yes. See, I got this on. But you know who really inspired the GOAT? Me to want to be great in all I do? This man right here. I, 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 I don't know. Before I start putting out this GOAT campaign, I already um, Facebook messaged you and told you that you are the, you are the when they come out of the ministry, I believe that you are the GOAT, one of the greatest GOATs when they come out of the ministry. Well, where, where are my DTS, the side of the streets people at? Where are my hip hop hope people at? Man, they in here. I love working with uh, hip hop hope. Hip hop hope gave rappers like me an opportunity to go out past the music, go to the apartment complexes, go in the hood, like places where I can't. I can't. I grew up in the night more design, the projects. So I understand how to go up and approach somebody with jeans falling all off and underwear, showing no t-shirt on, you know, no shirt on, and be like, "What's up, man?" Let me tell you what God did for me. Yeah. Hip Hop Hope gave me that, that uh, avenue to be able to do that. And not only that, but to, to, to display what, what God is doing in my life, my gift. And then they say, okay, brother, we, we, we thank you. How, how, much you, how much you want? I'm like, how much I want, man? I don't want nothing. <laughs> God is good to me, so God gonna bless me on the back end. You know, but I just, I just thank Trey Nine for all that he's done. Trey Nine said a long time ago that he's done with busy. But God told him to put him out the closet. <laughs> so I, I called on him, and ever since then, I've been watching his videos and everything, getting crunk, getting hype and everything. And I know God is going to do his thing. He bought friends with him. Uh, so I, I'm just happy to see what God is going to do with you, brother. And I just pray, you know, for uh, your, continue, your continued healing, your wife, your family, and everything. And I love you, brother. Yeah. Train on, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 I don't think I'm supposed to rap. I think I'm supposed to. Or something. That's an honor, man. And isn't he just humble? You know, he told me, Trey, you come around. And I said, no, I really don't do that anymore. I just, and he was like, yeah, but I want you to come and rap after I go. And I was like, okay, all right, I'll do it for you. And then he was like, yeah, how much how much, how much you want me to pay you? And I said, are you kidding me? Like, all the hip hop hopes you do and the way you serve, like, I'm not charging you for doing anything for me, you know? I mean, for me doing anything for you, you know? Um, we are the body, and we need each other. Yeah. Right? We need each other. And one thing I learned about Christian hip-hop early on, when I started, it was 95, and I started putting up music in 96, is I loved the fact that hip-hop united people. Black, white, brown, we were all one on that mic, on that stage, and we didn't care who was in the crowd, you know? And it united us around a common cause, CHH, Christian Hip Hop Houston, was united around the Great Commission. Because these rappers, I, I, I latched onto the rap community and I always said I'm gonna always do for the Christian Hip Hop community because they're, they're bold enough to go where oftentimes we don't see our ministers going, right? And so I latched onto that because I came from the inner city and I wanted to go back when God began to work on me. And so that's why I love Christian Hip Hop and that's why I committed my life um, to always invest in, in Christian hip hop, whether it was early on as an artist, later as a record label, then put on an award show, and then put on South by Southwest, just all the years I, I spent lots of money, lots of time, because I believe that one day Christian hip hop would be easy for the next generation here. And it is now. People can get into Christian hip hop today and they don't have to worry about pastors going, oh, that's the devil music. Like that's over with. We did that, right? Gifted, Vaughn, early on, you know, we, we, we built a foundation and built a bridge uh, with pastors and churches to where they would know that this is not the devil's music. This is far from that. It is God's music and it's God's message. And that's what I love about Christian hip hop. And so 
when I think of young artists aspiring to rap, you know, it's my desire they rap for God because they see Deep Boy and they see the Rod and they see all these other artists um, doing it with passion and energy. Imagine if all the Christian rappers just stopped. Imagine what we would leave them with. I mean, it's already hard to fight for their ear, right? Young people, it's hard to fight for young ear. I know y'all are getting pulled at school by all the music that is so opposite to what you hear on the stage. But we as Christian rappers, we know that without, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we want y'all's faith to be built on some, some, some godly stuff, true foundational stuff, stuff that's good morally and good spiritually and good physically, rather than building your faith off of hearing stuff that leads you into a lifestyle of crime, of drugs, of smoking, of, of, of being promiscuous, of teenage pregnancy, all these things that come with buying the lie of the other message. And so I will go down to the finish, making sure we provide y'all with music that you can make the switch Whenever the Lord convicts your heart, because obviously that's what it is right there. <laughs> the Lord has to convict them to turn that off and turn this on. And so thank you, D-Boy, um, for honoring me in that way. Um, that's another part of the body. We, we care for one another. And we hurt with each other, but we also honor one another in love. So um, DJ Lion A. Wade is our hip-hop hope DJ. Three is our hip-hop hope host. You know, always present. Also, I'm going to tell you, we got a table right here in the back with Miss Paula and Billy Jones. And, and if y'all want to get plugged into the streets and do some discipleship or evangelism or church planting or leadership development, that's what we do. And you can plug in um, right there at that table. Also, if you're a rapper in the room and you say, man, I want to rap, I want to get plugged in. So Rappers of the Round Table is starting back up to where we're uniting with the common cause. We're about to start working together. You're about to start hearing some noise from secular media about Christian Hip Hop Houston. But Rappers of the Round Table is where we go. We'll be getting together. So just see Paula and sign up uh, on that Rappers of the Round Table list. Um, check it out. This is what we're going to do. Um, let me see y'all say, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. Say, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. You gotta get off of that wood seat. Say, get off of that wood seat. Get off of that wood seat and follow me as I follow Christ. Let's go. Follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. You gotta get off of that wood seat. Say, you gotta get off of that wood seat and follow me as I follow Christ. Let's go. Follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. Slacks and a button up to rap in a church. Just so they could allow me <laughs> to 
people are saying. Thirties. I was on the way up, man. By then, we had a record label established. We had award shows going. We had a lot. Christian hip hop Houston was rated the number one place for Christian hip hop in the country, actually in the world. But you know, something happens when you hit forty. Then you start turning way up. You got a little wisdom. You're not so quick to respond when someone offends you, you know. You make better choices. You start using your money a little more wisely. <laughs> so now I'm on the way up, all right? So let's try this real quick. Teenagers, y'all repeat after me. I'm gonna say teenage, I was on the way up. And I just want y'all to say way up. Teenage, I was on the way up. Good, good, good. 20s, where y'all at 20s? 20s, I was on the way up. Oh, girl. Now I know you was back rapping when I was doing it in the early 2000s. <laughs> so if you're in your 20s, 20s, I was on the way up, way up. You got it? All right. 30s, I was on the way up. Way up. Okay, okay, just one more thing. 40s, now I'm turning way up. Way up! Okay, okay, you know who's running this show, let's go. Come on. All right, come on. This is the first show I've done with this many 40s. If you're 50s and 60s, I ain't there yet. Way up! Teenage, I was on the way up. 20s, I was on the way up. 30s, I was on the way up. Yeah. 
CDs? No, 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 CDs. We don't do CDs anymore, do you? My bad. Uh, did you print CDs this time? No, what I ain't. You didn't even bother with it. I had USBs back then. Just slipped out. Just slipped out. To be honest with you, I have cassettes and I have vinyl. Yeah. It's back at the house, back at the house. On the wall. <laughs> Kids are like, what cassettes? What is that, Mom? <laughs> vinyl? What is that? Love y'all, love y'all, youngsters, man. All right, so look, man. Every now and then, someone will say, "Trey, now let's do a feature together." And uh, and so my good friend, AD, the problem solver, Two Crumb, we all got on the track together. I think that's where we're going next, right? Yeah. And so yeah, this yeah, was yeah. called the light. Yeah. It was an honor to be a part of it. And um, and we gonna rock this one for y'all, man. Now we get my friends to help me. As you see, a little congested. I have coronavirus now. No. Boy, I'm not alone. I know, man. Hey, I don't know. This I just want to see what that would be like. <laughs> I have two couples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the one time? I've already beat coronavirus. Um, no, I just got some science questions and stuff like that. Don't be afraid. Really, you can do all of this stuff. You're like six feet from me now. All right, let's go. Man. Let's do it. This is on AD the Problem Solvers Project. It was an honor to work with my boy. I love this guy. I love ETS, bro. Yeah, come on, everybody. Get to the yeah. front, y'all. Get to the front. Train. When I go to Wild Wild, they say, I saw you on TV. You was on the show on AD the Problem Solvers. Yeah. 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 Oh, baby. 
happening through him with the next generation. And, and so I, I brag on him a lot because I get to hear the deep conversations when he struggles as well as celebrate his victories. And you know, to everybody in the room, if you don't have like Austin, you're 29 now? Yes sir, just turned, you just turned 29 on the 26th. Austin turned uh, 29 and so I'm 46 and so you look at the age difference. You know, young people, it's important to have someone maybe 15, 20 years older than you that you can call and say, here's what I'm dealing with, what do you think? Yeah. I've had to correct him, I've had to encourage him, I've had to pull him out of some deep spots, but there's also times where he encourages me now. And so I benefit just as mutually from this relationship of disciples of generations um, as he does. And so I, I hope D-Boy don't mind, but man, Austin dropped this fire song 
that I was like, man, why don't you come up? I'm a little under the weather, so I don't want to go too long. And he gave me 45 minutes, which is a long set. I should have charged that. It was that long. I should have charged that. But, uh, but anyway, I was like, man, why don't you come and help me out and do this song? Because he hasn't done this song in any uh, church venues yet that I'm aware of, except maybe his home. Just we just did it here, actually, on the 21st, like, I think. Oh, so this one time, that that the first time most of y'all have probably never had a chance to see this, and I'm like, man, I want to see it, my kids want to see it. Hopefully y'all enjoy it as much as I do, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Austin Lanier and Coro, King Coro. Absolutely, man. Y'all, if you can hear my voice say, yo, yo. Mike, yeah. check, check, check. If you can turn me down just a little bit up here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there we are. So, uh, my name is Austin Lanier. For those of you that don't know me, hello. Nice to meet you. Um, for those of you that do, what's good? You know what it is? Um, um, tonight is special and it's funny because I just, just I'm, I'm the type where it's transparency all the time. Like, I'm not changing because I'm getting on stage. It's not a performance for me. I'm, I'm just sharing my heart with y'all. That's what, that's what I'm called to do. And I told Coral, my, my brother, earlier tonight, just about 15, 20 minutes ago, to click, and I said, I need tonight as much as I need to give tonight to someone else and be a vessel for it. You know, it's for me too tonight. The, the encouragement, the message, uh, especially the heart behind the song, Heaven, the single, just put it out on the 26th. Any of y'all heard that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Heaven, okay. It's out there. If, if you ain't heard it, you're sleeping. But uh, this song came to be. That song came to be from a place in my life where I realized, man, like, you know, Paul says in Romans 8, he says, I, I present that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the future glory that awaits. And I realized Paul tapped into something special when he tapped into the reality of heaven. And he goes in, he goes on to say in 1 Corinthians, he says, man, I'd actually rather depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but for your sake, I need to stay here so that we can continue in the progress of the faith and enjoy the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul, in the midst of his suffering, the radical transformation God did in his life took him from being the worst of the worst. And anybody relate to that? God take you from just being the worst of the worst, but changing your life dramatically to where you just now sold out for Christ. But guess what? He's still suffering. But now you know that you have Christ, and no matter what goes on here on this earth, one day you have an eternal glory with Jesus Christ when you have a relationship. That's something to be excited about. Anybody just know they going to heaven in here? No matter what, come on. So, so God put this song in my heart and uh, and it came up so organically with my brother Coral when I showed it to him and he showed me a song he was working on. I was like, oh, like, don't try singing that on top of this. And then God just was flexing, man. He's such a, it's so much more than music, though, because like I told y'all, this is my brother. We hold each other accountable. We're involved in DTS discipleship, so we, it's not just a stage. Like, we really in each other's life, just like Trey's in my life. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I hope this song encourages you. It's called Heaven. You ready to turn over? I got going down for glory. I'm just trying to love y'all. I love y'all so much. Hey, shout out to the band, man. Thank y'all so much for coming out here. We, we, we gonna we gonna give y'all what we got, man. We, we trying some new stuff, so let's do it, man. You can drop this on heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.
thinking to myself over we here with this type of energy, if we can just, if we can aim this passion and this desire to keep going and to go deeper, if we can harness this in our lives, we can lead a revival in this country, in this city, in the state, in the country, we can change the world, y'all. Let's do it for Jesus, man. I think that's my time up here. God bless y'all, man. Thank y'all. Close this little set out. I want you to come up here with me. How many uh, kids uh, between, you know, kids in elementary as well as uh, junior high and and high school that are Christian? You're, you're you're in elementary, junior high, high school, and you're a Christian, and you're a child, you're a child of God. You're, you're in the high school, junior high, um, or elementary. Okay, I want y'all. If you're a Christian and you ain't ashamed of it, I want you to just come up here on stage with me. This is the safest place you can do it, you know. This is the safest place you can do it. Every single, every single teen, every single um, child that you are a Christian and you aren't ashamed, I want you to come up here right now. Come on up. Every single one of you. Y'all aren't going to have to dance. Y'all already did that really well tonight. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna listen. Look, see, a lot of times we... We, we want the kids, you know, at our, at our shows and our concerts because they get live and they get rowdy, but they have power, y'all. Yeah. They have power. Y'all have power. Jesus thought so highly of children that he even rebuked his own disciples when they were trying to shoo y'all away from Jesus. And Jesus has said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew 18, 3. And so Jesus was laying um, a, a foundation to say that the faith that y'all carry, you know, my son, they're not worried about if the bills are getting paid. They're not worried about if there's going to be a roof over our heads. They're not worried about that because daddy got it covered. You feel me? That's my responsibility as a man to take care of that. And so they don't ask those questions. Well, our Heavenly Father, children don't worry about those things. At least children that are raised in a home with a father or with a mother that's providing that. And we too shouldn't worry as well. Because God loves us way more than an earthly father or mother could. And so the question is, is why don't we let so many things cloud our judgment? And why can't we just approach God with a childlike faith? Adults have so much in their lives. They're thinking about bills. They're thinking about the car that broke down. They're thinking about the relationship they were in. They're thinking about this and that and health issues and all this stuff. And y'all, y'all turn around and look at me right quick. Y'all, y'all don't have to carry that. So this guy right here, D-Boy, I want y'all to pray for him. Because I believe y'all can get a prayer through. I believe Jesus loves little children praying, right? And I wanted to pray for him, and I wanted to get all the leaders from our ministry and leaders from youth ministry, and I just, just something hit me like, why do you got to go there, Trey? You got children that are powerful here. And I want y'all to participate in the most powerful thing you'll ever be able to do in your whole life, and that's pray, because you can move mountains through prayer. You can change things through prayer, because God loves you. So this is what we're going to do. I want you to just get down on lean with me, and you guys just lay hands on him. And is there any one of you, come on, come on, touch him just right here. Just lay your hands on him. Just lay your hands on him. Because he just dropped an album, and so Satan really hates him right now and really wants to stop him. All right, so y'all are just going to pray in your own prayer. You can just pray. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of be quiet for a minute, and I'll just let y'all pray. You can just pray, God bless his album, bless his ministry. You could pray, God bless his family. Whatever God puts on your little heart, you just start to pray. Can you do that? All right, and everybody out there, y'all just pray as well with them. 